Electricast. That being strong is the masculine doing and the hardness and also just as equally is the feminine softness, is the feminine feeling, is the feminine sensitivity. And when we show up in that beautiful emotional balance, how this also impacts the people around us, and you know this so well, Jenny, I'll use you as an example. We show up as a light of what is possible, right? Because we are more connected than we think. We are more connected than we even realize. When we show up as our emotional being, even if we are unconscious of it, there is something inside of us that resonates with that because we all want to be in our brightest light. Welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. This podcast is meant to encourage you to connect within so you can share your light with the world. And now, here's your host, Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Welcome, beautiful beings, to another episode of the Cosmic Love Antenna We are back here today for your inner connection to your outer expression where I, your host Harrison, with the divine privilege, with the guest I get to talk to today, set the intention of pulling back the layers, restricting health, alignment, and love. And today you found yourself on a extra special new bonus episode that I've started doing here on the show. You found yourself on a community coaching chat where I am bringing on a divine, lovely, beautiful member of the tribe, the Cosmic Love Antenna community, to really go into more deeply a specific topic that I talk about a lot and give you, give the person I'm talking to, the part of the the community member, and also you, the listener, some more precise, more specialized, more nuanced support, basically. And the topic we're going to hit on today is all things emotional healing. Before I throw to the lovely soul who I have here to help today, I want to remind you, the beautiful listener, that if you get some value out of this chat today, how you can help build the show is by sharing this out to friends and family members that you think it can help. And also I have started, what I'm going to start to do is pick people from the reviews in the community to do these shows with in the future. So if you want to be on the show, you want to do this kind of chat, leave it in the reviews and I'll pick your beautiful soul if it is, if it is meant to be. So With that today, I have the beautiful Jennifer Sims here today to talk about all things emotional healing. Jennifer, how are you you feeling, my friend? I feel good. I'm finally grounded. I've been really nervous, but I feel balanced now. I'm ready to be here. I'm excited. It's an honor. Well, my friend, I love you very much. And I, you know, with this topic today, much like our mutual friend, Jennifer, I cannot think of a perfect being to go deeper into this because you much like jennifer you're such a student you're such a seeker you're such a a knower and a, a learner and and your your soul is open to this kind of information much like a lot of the people listening so i received the love but i'm honored just as much okay so let's start this before we get to your questions I want to ask about what's happened over the last couple of days because I think this really gives a gives a highlight of why this emotional healing topic today is important. So give us a summary, Jenny, of really what's happened over the last couple of days since I invited you onto this chat. Wow. Um, when you first invited me, I was thrilled. I've been a follower since the beginning um, of the podcast. And- And when it came down to me actually thinking about what I was going to say and ask, I went completely blank, um, went back into my old ways of overthinking, uh, couldn't get out of my head. I practiced everything I've learned. I've tried to put them into practice. I was trying to be mindful um, to the point that by, I guess, a couple of days later, I ended up sick and and I knew, you know, I didn't want to cancel. I was like, I'm going to heal myself. I'm going to do this. This is, this is why I'm going through this illness is so I can do this interview. And I couldn't. And so it was like, I had to send you the message. I got to reschedule, um, had more time. And Jenny, just to interrupt here. Yes. It's not that you couldn't, you just needed more time, right? You just needed to sit in it for a little bit longer, right? Keep going. Most definitely. I believe that. Now I'm going to get emotional. (laughs) Um, 
yeah, going through this, I found I'm a very emotional being. But so then when I, once I made the decision to reschedule, it, it took a big relief off of me, you know, some weight. And so then I just kind of focused on healing myself and the ways that I used to do this, which I've always been into natural healing. I went into essential oils, my, you know, healing soup is what I call it, um, outside resources. However, nothing worked. Um, and then just started digging deeper. And I just felt, honestly, I felt more so the thoughts that started coming up was based around my healing myself. Mm. But then I thought, how am I going to pull off an interview mm. and sharing with others my light if I can't even heal mm. this cold? Mm. And so then my intentions began, you know, I needed to heal myself naturally with just my energy, not with my old ways, which were still natural, but I just, I wanted to do it with my body and my spirit. And once those intentions were set in, it was actually pretty quick after it happened. I, I stepped into it. I, I visualized it. I felt it um, all of the above. I mean, I literally shifted immediately. So this is why I wanted you to share this, right? because this is, there are many aspects of this that you've, stepped into over the last couple of days, right? And there are definitely a lot of spiritual pieces to it. But from an emotional lens, right? From an emotional healing lens. And this is what we're probably going to get into today with your questions. A big theme here and a, and a pillar that I want to state as we go deeper is we must feel it to heal it, right? We must surrender. We must listen. We must acknowledge, as you said, you said a second ago, you're an emotional being. Plot twist here, every single person listening is an emotional being. It's just we're programmed to feel and to think that when we are being too emotional or our emotions are coming up, that means we're being too much or we're being something difficult or we're being something wrong. So this is really what we mean by emotional healing. Put very simply, right? It is embracing this emotional side of us right and surrendering and feeling and healing into it and that's why you started to feel better my friend because you started to create the space for that piece of you to come up right and to to be acknowledged in all its forms okay so with that right with that let's let's get into your questions today because i think they're going to circle around a lot of this so what's what's the first thing on your heart that you want to ask um you know, when I started writing my questions after I, you know, began this part of, you know, the healing process, <laughs> I, you know, the, the questions started coming up, but it started with actually, it reminded me of my story. Yep. And, um, you know, I've been through a lot of trauma and drama. And with my upbringing, I, you know, family related or spiritual, I didn't really see or experience expression of emotions. Mm -hmm. Um, we were taught to basically suck it up and survive. Um, my spiritual background made me feel like I was to give my emotional distress to God. Um, and then everything would be fine. And here I am decades later and I'm coming out of trauma and drama, you know, decades later. And now that my focus is on unconditional love for myself, um, I am experiencing basically I, what I saw was an image of an iceberg to, of emotions that have begun to melt. And as I go through the recognition of these experiences, especially when I go into the beginning of my inner child healing, um, I found myself literally crying for hours. I'm sure that there are other people out there that as they learn to express in the beginning, to express their emotions, my question to you is, is that normal? Is it healthy to cry for hours? Mm. Much like the other episodes I've done with this sort of format of community coaching, 
what I'm starting to notice already is these reoccurring questions that everyone has. And this is one of them, right? So you've tapped into something that every single person I've been able to support and help ask this question. And the short answer is yes. And I'm going to explain why. That iceberg, why do you think it's an iceberg, right? It's an iceberg, it's an iceberg because it's been building and building and building for such a long time. And I want to make this very clear for all the beautiful souls listening. You are in your power. You are connected to so much, not just of your emotional being, but you know, even more of that spiritual side of things when you are crying, right? Crying is a divine act. But much like every other aspect of us, there is no, there is no judgment if we do not allow that divine act to move through. But what there is, is a buildup. What there is is a is a is a pushing to the surface, which is why we get physical pain, which is why we get other hits in our body when we suppress and ignore our emotions. It's because our body that loves us, that wants to get our attention in the emotional pathway, starts getting our attention in the physical pathway to see the thing and feel the thing that needs to be felt. So going back to the question of, is it normal to cry for days? For some people, it is. But what I think is more clear for everyone listening to see is that think about how long you haven't been crying for. Think about how many years you haven't been allowing for whatever reason, for whatever story that's been playing in the background, like you talked about with your upbringing, my friend, has been holding back those tears. So landing here, and we'll get to your next question. Yes, it is normal. I want to encourage all of you listening that if you find yourself in this situation, don't judge yourself if, if that's happening. Embrace and celebrate that now that divine act is starting to move through you. Does that answer your question, Jen? Absolutely. Yeah. And that that's how it felt was that it was a, a breakthrough of releasing 40 years plus of tears that never came out. Yeah. Um, and and Jane, let me add one more thing to this because I know that you've experienced this too. This is another another way that we can see it as a beautiful thing is this now becomes an opportunity where we can hold the child, right? Yeah. What are you, what, what is the state that you're in as you're crying over those days? It's not going to, it's not very precise and comfortable, right. right? It's usually very difficult. It's usually very challenging. It's usually you're shaking. You're, there's a lot of things coming up. So now what that also is, is an opportunity for you to hold yourself to nurture yourself, to help tell your emotional body that it's okay to feel all the feelings, right? To be there for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that kind of goes with this next question. Um, you know, talking about basically not crying for years. Um, I lived in denial uh, most of my life. Um, it felt right and easier to place all of my emotional energy into others. Um, being a mom of four, you know, I was in a 23 year dysfunctional marriage. Um, what's interesting is, you know, I was praised all of that time for being a super mom. Everyone praised me. My neighbors would ask me, I lived in the same street for seven years. They would ask, how do you do it? You know, how do you stay so strong? And I would say, it's Jesus. <laughs> you know, I gave it to God. And I was a child care provider. The moms would ask. I'd be pregnant and wouldn't cry. And over all the stuff going on, everyone always asked and thought that I was so strong. And I was strong. And I believed that I was super mom. Um, but the trauma and the drama didn't stop. Mm-hmm. You know, which, which led me to you was I knew something was still missing here. and. Anyway, um, to carry on, because I did have so many people around me um, during all this time, my next question is, you know, and I know it's too vague, but, you know, the effects that this has on those that were around me, you know, my mm-hmm. children. Mm-hmm. Stop you know, vague it. have emotions. Yeah. Jenny, I'm going to say a couple of things here. One, it's not vague at all right? And when we talk about this emotional 
conversation. I feel you beyond your words. Okay. So uh, believe me, I'm picking up things regardless if you say them or not. Okay. Second, just as you're getting emotional with me here today, I want you, all you need to do, and you know this, Jenny, but I, I say this for as an example for people listening, just be here, right? Just be with these emotions, right? This is emotional healing in itself, right? Allowing everything to move through you in the way that it needs to move through. Okay. Let's, let's answer your question in terms of its impact on the people around us, our children, our family. I want to go back to what you said around being strong, right? Around you felt that you were being strong by, mm-hmm. by not being emotional, by being the super mom, by holding it in. And I want to encourage you, Jenny, and anyone listening, let's redefine what strong is, right? Yes, strong is the masculine of the doing, showing up, supporting, being there for the children, the family, the people that you're looking after, all the things that you did, Jenny. But strong is also the feminine, right? What is the feminine? The feminine is the allowing, is the flowing, is the feeling, is the sensitivity, is the is the emotions in many ways. The sacral chakra, the first feminine chakra is that sensitivity and those emotions. So in terms of this emotional healing work impacting the people around us. Yes, it does impact them, right? Yes, you being that super mom, Jenny, you know this, it, d- it did impact yeah. them. They did see you as an example of what is strong. But let's flip the coin, right? Just because you, just like you can show up in that form, you can now show up in this new form, in this new form where you show the people around you, and this is for everyone listening, that being strong is the masculine doing and the hardness and also just as equally is the feminine softness, is the feminine feeling, is the feminine sensitivity. And when we show up in that beautiful emotional balance, how this also impacts the people around us, and you know this so well, Jenny, but I'll use you as an example. We show up as a light of what is possible, right? Because we are more connected than we think. We are more connected than we even realize. When we show up as our emotional being, even if we are unconscious of it, there is something inside of us that resonates with that because we all want to be in our brightest light. So summarizing this, Jenny, for you, when you show up as that strong woman that is in both the masculine and the feminine, it impacts the people around you because the light that you are now shining out as is also the same light that each and every, each and every one of us wants to be internally. So we're pulled towards it so that yeah, makes sense and that's exactly what I've experienced. yeah and i've experienced you know watching others being more attracted to me now um but especially i i feel empowered i feel strong i feel independent um now i feel super um i really didn't feel so super back then and, and now i do um i definitely resonate with that and jenny i have one more thing before your next question I would also just just to put this in here for people so they're aware of it. The, this emotional healing is also connected to ancestral healing too, right? As is the inner child, as is all the other topics we talk about in this inner world. So just to give a very specific example, Jenny, if you are working on your management of anger, right? You're, you're allowing it, you're working out how to move it through you in a balanced way and expressing it, not taking it out as rage, not suppressing it from an ancestral lens. When you heal that anger, Jenny, that also heals the anger in your family, right? Both that might exist in your children and that might also exist in your parents. So that's also a way for you to to impact the people around you through your own emotional healing. It's beautiful. Yeah, I believe it. Um, My next question. So... This one's kind of funny. As I went through this last week of coming up with questions and trying to figure out what emotions are, um, that kind of is where the next question is going to lead to. We're taught that we have three emotions, happy, sad, or angry. Yeah. What's your opinion of that? Because that's what we literally, they say, how do you feel today? And you have your smiley face, your sad face, or your angry face. Yes. Yeah. That is not what I went through this last week. Yes. So... (laughs) This is a really good question, Jenny. And the first thing I'm going to say is that someone who's in this world as a practitioner, there is just as many opinions on 
emotions as there are people in this industry. So I just, I say that and to put that out there for people listening and learning, the best way to understand your emotions is actually to go inside of yourself, right? I would actually, it's very, we, we, we get lost in the labels and the definitions and the, the, the uh, breakdowns of most things in life. But within this emotional healing context today, it is, I would say it's even more important to be aware of it because yes, there are a sort of generic foundations that we can all begin with. Like for example, in my teachings, I teach about sadness. I teach about sadness and grief. I teach about anger. I teach about guilt and shame. And those are really sort of foundational where we can start, but we are so individualized and we're so complicated and we're so they're so so complex in many ways and this also connects to our emotions so to answer your question my friend and to share my thoughts on this there is there is so much moving through us in terms of our emotions and what i actually think is more important for each individual as you start to do this kind of healing work is ask yourself what is the feeling behind it right so so rather than so let's use anger as an example Let's say that I'm starting to define what anger is for me. Instead of getting lost in the, defin- in, in the definition of what a teacher has told me about anger, what would be more important is to define how does anger show itself in my body, right? For me, for example, I've noticed a very similar characteristic that anger likes to hold itself in the stomach, likes to hold itself in the gut, likes to hold itself in that solar plexus region. But for you, is that a common occurrence? Right. And right. And you can start to take track of that. You can start to notice. Right. Another example is grief and sadness for me in my teachings likes to hold itself a lot in that, in that chest space around that heart area. Right. It feels really heavy in that area when I feel sad and, and feel grief. But for the person listening, you need to check that. You need to correlate with that. And if it's different, that doesn't mean you're wrong. That just means that there is a more nuanced experience that you're having. And the last thing I'll say here for you, Jenny, is, and for people listening, take it a step further. So feel the thing, look at how it's showing in your body, but then don't get lost in how different or how similar it may or may not be. Process it. Process it anyway, right? How do we process it? We feel it. How do we process it? We breathe into it and release it. How do we process it? We give love to it and we allow it to move on. Yeah, whatever, you know, physical ailments bringing that back up. But whenever I started going through that, that kind of what was interesting as, you know, my intentions changed and I told you that I felt the shift and I started feeling better. However, before the shift and when the emotions started coming through, it were, it was shadows and I had new shadows come up with, you know, first I'm crying once I, you know, felt my light and my power and, you know, I was in my, my heart space, but shadows started coming up that had nothing to do with this interview. Nothing, yes. so nothing to do with it at all. <laughs> I was Jenny, like, Jenny, let's talk about that. Cause this is really, this is really important. This is really important, Jenny. So this is. Yeah. When you say shadows, just give me an example. You mean like stories and and memories from your past, correct? Beliefs. And it was it was it was beliefs, but it actually was beliefs that I have on myself that I didn't realize I had. Yeah. So this is so important. Okay, and this is another really core pillar of emotional healing that I want to make clear for everyone listening: is emotions that are stuck in the body aren't just stuck with emotions. They're how, think about how an emotion is created in, in an experience. It's usually created around a belief or a thought, an experience that occurs, right? For example, let's say as a child, I was, and this was a very real experience for me, right? Let's say I was abandoned. I was abandoned at a bus station, right? In that experience, there would have both been the creation of the emotion of grief, sadness, anger for me. And also simultaneously, the thoughts and the beliefs of I'm not worthy, I I deserve to be left here, right? I'm alone, all these stories and beliefs, right? So this is not a Harrison thing. This is how we function, 
right? When we start to start, and this is what you experience on the weekend, Jenny, once you start to release and feel the emotions that are moving through you, through your tissues, through your body, they're also going to come with these beautiful subconscious, unconscious beliefs and thought forms that have been playing in the background for who knows how long, but are now coming up to be seen. And just as we approach the emotions with love and acceptance and allowance, forgiveness, we now do the same thing for the thoughts and the beliefs that are attached to them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right, that's, was, that's shadow work, right? That's what we just defined there was, as shadow work. You know, most of my work that I've done, you know, started in February, but most of the work that I've done, I mean, there's been a lot of intentions in there and, you know, I was looking for it um, this time it was just out of nowhere. These thoughts started coming up and I was like, what? That's not how I need to fix myself right now. And, but I, but I felt a, a significant and it was a physical spiritual pull. I had to shine light on this and recognize this about myself. And the more I did it, you know, of course I started getting emotional with tears. Um, but it was interesting how, you know, my thoughts changed, you know, my mindset changed because as I started healing and recognizing this of myself, um, releasing the tears and, and flowing with the emotion, positive words started coming into my mind and it almost became like a chant. Um, I'm like tingling all over right now, but I just started thinking positive words and I couldn't stop saying them. And I just kept saying them over myself over and over. And, and it was, it felt wonderful. You unlocked, you unlocked the real reality, right? You, yeah. And there's a lot of pieces to what Jenny's explaining here, but the one I want to pull out for people to, to really feel into is that Jenny broke free of a limiting reality that she was unconsciously living, right? And what she unlocked, what she felt through that positivity in many ways, it's also love, right? Is her real truth, her real potential, right? Every single person listening, it is not a natural state to be in one of dis-ease, dysfunction, to be in chronic pain, to be in, in, in being triggered all the time. That's not your natural state. Your natural state is what Jenny just explained, the positivity, the love, the balance, the homeostasis, the, the alignment to self. So of course, Jenny, when you open, even if it was unintentional, right? When you open the door for that love to come in, it's going to break through, right? It totally broke through and just spoke over me. You know, I'll have to, you know, kind of add in, you know, I have a very, I have a pretty long spiritual background and, you know, I spent a lot of many, many years, um, leader in Baptist church and, you know, reminds me, you know, it it was the same feeling, um, similar because back then, you know, I would hear God, you know, is what I was told the Holy spirit speaking to me. Um, so it was similar to that feeling. However, this time, it definitely, you saying that it unlocked a door, I strongly feel that way. It, it was. Yeah, Jenny. Yeah. It was a, <laughs> com, it was a, it was a coming from within you rather than a coming outside sure. of you. Yes. Right? The, the God, the spirit, the, you know, in that context that you just described from the Baptist church, you know, and I'm putting words in your mouth, but I, you know, I've spent enough time with you to know how this works, right? Is that teaching was probably showing you that there's something outside of you that's giving that power and that divinity. But in that moment, in that opening of the door, you realize that power was always inside of you. Right. And that, and that was moving through you. Right. Yeah. So it always has, but now I can feel feel it it. and see. Yeah. (laughs) So Jenny, you probably have time for a couple more here. So what, what's, what's next on your list? Well, we've covered a couple actually just from talking. Um, I'm going to go to, um, you know, when we first connected on Facebook, you learned pretty quickly that I'm a journaler. Um, 
that's been a huge part of my healing experience. And, you know, I sent you images from the very beginning. It's easier for me to communicate this way. Um, so, you know, for me and probably plenty of others, journaling feels safe for our thoughts and feelings. And so I want to ask you is, you know, has this been, I know it's healthy for me to be journaling all of this, obviously. Um, but you've watched, you've watched me for months now. I, I, I do, I speak with my pages of my journal <laughs> and is that still healthy? <laughs> the, short answer, the short answer for you, Jenny, is of course it's still healthy, but I'm going to, okay. I'm going to expand this out for you and everyone listening. So with emotional healing, one of the first things we have to sort of ask ourselves is what is the way that we can channel these feelings and emotions that is best suited for us. And we must acknowledge that each and every one of us is going to have a unique answer to that question. Right. And, uh, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Right. Just like the soul that we are is unique and has unique gifts. The emotional side of that soul, which we're talking about today also has biochemical individuality. Right. So the short answer is that if if the journaling for you, Jenny, and for anyone listening is the way that we're processing our feelings and emotions and we're just going all in on it and it's and it's working for us, then don't fix what's not what what isn't broke, right? But I want to just encourage people listening that have used journal work to really look at what is happening. Right. What are you doing when you do journal work? Right. You are channeling the deeper side of yourself into the words. And while a lot of journaling is going to be processing shadows, as Jenny has talked about today, what I often don't see and what I would encourage people to do more of is to actually look at the light that they're sharing on the page. And what I mean by that is it's very easy for me to journal about my pain. It's very easy for me to journal about my trauma, my challenge, my the, the, the event that occurred, right? Because that's it's really where a lot of the emotions will come up. But what people often don't do, and what I would encourage you to do more of, Jenny, and people listening, is journal more about your beautiful light aspects that are coming up within the shadows, right? How do we, how do, we do shadow work? How do we, what is it that's helping us process the emotions, right? L let me go back to what I said before, Jenny, around when we have the emotions moving through us, we must hold the child. We must hold ourselves and nurture ourselves through it. What is the piece of you that's holding you? Right? There is a light aspect. There is a healed aspect. There is an angelic aspect. There is a divine aspect, right? Many different pieces here. So what I'm getting at here for you, Jenny, is the short answer, like I said before, is yes, very normal, very healthy. But what I would encourage you to do more of is within your writings about all the shadows that you're noticing and healing and integrating, also create space to talk about and acknowledge your light. Because if we can acknowledge the light more as equally as the shadow, now our frequency is expanding even higher, right? And once our frequency expands higher, we now have the capacity to do more of the shadow work, to do more of the healing, because we're not just focusing on the lows. We're now encompassing the full spectrum of what we are. How does that feel? Totally resonate. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how it feels. I was just picturing how my journal started because I, when I was looking for the questions, you know, to come up for me, I went back to my story, which is in my journal and, and how much it's changed significantly from the beginning. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where it is now is yeah. I do about the my light. channeling. And yeah. I, and, um, and I'll say one more thing here, Jenny, because it's coming up for me, like the journaling, is just one example of the way that we can do this shadow and light work, right? You, if for you listening, if it's also speaking, right? For me, a big part of my shadow work, my processing is the speaking of it. For some people, it's moving, right? Doing yoga, doing exercise, doing that shadow work and that light work through yoga. For some other people, it's you know connecting to nature, right? So if journaling doesn't work for you, beautiful. Apply everything I just said to the thing that does, right? And it's the same thing. 
I, I was about to say, as soon as you said movement, that's, you know, I mean, I've talked about music is huge for yes, me. That's another one. Um, music and dancing, just there's something about it. But um, my last question, um, it's a pretty simple one. Um, people are recognizing more today, obviously, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do females need to express their emo- emotions more than males? Mm, what a good question. So this is a complex, there's layers to this. And the short answer is no. And what I mean by that is we need equality. But I don't just mean that from a (laughs) social, economical, political, uh, physical male versus female lens. We need equality within our internal being. So when you say, when Jenny says, do females need to uh, feel their emotions more than males. She's she's referring to the physical female, but we must understand that whether we are in a physical male body <clears throat> or a physical female body, we have both divine feminine and divine masculine inside of us. So when we're asking, does the feminine need to express more than the male? Of course, the answer is no, because within each individual person, like I said before, we need to express the masculine and the feminine equally, right? And the emotions are one way to do that. However, I'm going to add a little asterisk to this. In the in this in the socio socio-economical cultural world that we live in, the the feminine is very suppressed. The feminine is suppressed both at a physical layer, as in physical females are suppressed, right? The, the patriarchy is an example of that, right? And it's also suppressed on an energetic level, both within the females, the physical females, as as Jenny has talked about today, being the super mum, right? And also, I would say, equally in the is in the physical male, right? I, for example, grew up as a man, a physical man, that was told that it is weak to feel, that it is not manly to be sensitive, that it is not manly to be emotional, that it is not manly to be connected to my sensitivities, right? So, when you say, Jenny, when you ask me the question does the feminine need to express more from a balanced lens? No, but from a collective group of where we're all at currently in our journey. Yes, because the feminine needs to catch up because we've suppressed the feminine for so long in so many ways right now, I actually would make the, the diagnosis. If you want to call it that, if you're listening to this, whether you're male or female, you do need to le- to express your feminine more because we we are in such a a world that creates a human whether you're physically male or physically female that is taught that the feminine the divine feminine inside of you is not valuable so we do need to create the space in our lives just until we get back up to that balanced state to allow more of that feminine energy to flow beautiful I've got lots of men in my life. I hope they listen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, I, I, it's the future that I see, right? I, it's one of the missions that I have. And I know you see this in me, my friend, is stepping in as a man that does express that feminine, right? Yes. Jenny, I love you very much. Thank you for spending your time with me today. I hope that your beautiful questions today were able to help other people listening and connecting to their emotional healing journey. Jenny, I know you know this, but you did beautifully today. See all of that worrying, all of that stress. There was a reason for it, but it wasn't the reason that you expected. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Stronger and brighter. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, beautiful beings, both Jenny and I send you love, send you light, send you a lot of guidance on your day today. If this brought you value, please share this out with your friends, family members, lovers out there in the world. If you would like to be on the show, like to go deeper into this kind of coaching, community coaching, please leave your reviews on Spotify and Apple and I'll pick the next beautiful being. But regardless, we love you unconditionally and we'll see you next time here on the show. Bye everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to follow Harrison on Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse at Harrison Ma. That's Harrison, M-E-A-G-H-E-R.
Electricast.